My name is Carlton Utter. I'm the Chief Ambition Igniter with Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate, otherwise known as the Senior Director of Consulting and Special Projects. But I like Chief Ambition Igniter. It flows a little bit better and really kind of sums up what I do for the network at Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. But enough about that. What we're here to talk about today is video marketing and communication. And this is really going to be a high-level introduction to a lot of things that you can do to start to promote yourself and to really look at video as a pure marketing and communication tool. Now, I go to conferences all over the country, as I'm sure many of you do, and video and right now even virtual reality, and there's a lot of other of these topics that are always hot at these conferences. And video is still one of them that comes up just because we're not seeing a lot of people using it correctly. Now, the problem is that when I go to these conferences and I listen to speak, people speak on video, they like to talk about budget. And they like to talk about big budgets. And they get a lot of these speakers that show how they're using video in market areas where the average selling price is over a million dollars. And they just have thousands of dollars they can spend on high production videos, things like that. That is not what I'm here to do today. I live in the middle of New Jersey. Um, I, I have my real estate license here. Our average selling price in my market area in East Brunswick, New Jersey is around 220000 uh, We are on a budget in real estate here. We are working commission check to commission check, right? We, we, we look at what we spend and what we get in, and we're always calculating our ROI. We don't have those big budgets. So what this program today will be perfect for is helping you understand how to get started in real estate on a minimal budget or how to get started in video marketing for real estate on a minimal budget to see if it's something that you want to progress up to or if you want to advance into it. Also, it's going to help you understand that communication is changing drastically. Social media as a tool and how video now integrates into social media has completely changed. I remember doing presentations in 2008 on using social media, and you're talking about text and just being engaged, engaged um, with, your, with your end user. And then you looked at using photos, and now everything is moving to video. So that's really going to be the approach here, is how can you use video effectively on a limited budget, and what can you start doing with video to maybe start to progress up if you want to go to the next level with it. So I'm going to start off with one of my favorite all-time commercials. To this day, I can't drive past a Wendy's without thinking, where's the beef? And I know when you see this, you're all thinking in your head, unless you're a millennial and you have no idea what this is. In that case, go to YouTube and look up Wendy's, where's the beef? It was a commercial that ran over 30 years ago and for only one year. And what I find amazing about this is that this was just the video marketing piece, commercials. It used to be all about commercials. And you had to save up so much money to do and make commercials to put them on national television. Well, nobody is watching national television anymore, right? People are TiVoing it or DVRing it, and they're fast forwarding through commercials. 25 to 35 year olds are watching more YouTube right now than they are television, right? So everything is moving now to video marketing that you can control and you can create. So you want to think about when you're creating something, will it have some staying power? And you really want to think about this as marketing. This was a genius marketing ad that Wendy's did. And because of how they utilized it and how they got creative with that video, again, I know you want to think it's a commercial. It was a video that just got in front of a lot of people. Right? Back in the day, you had to pay for that to happen. Now you have audiences that are looking for your content. You have, it's so much easier to get stuff out in front of them. And that's why I start with this ad. Think about video as your commercial. Every time you make it, it's a commercial for you. And you can make it any way you want. But I love the staying power with this one. To this day, again, 30 years ago it ran. I was a little kid. And to this day, I drive fast, and I still think of it. So think about your role as a real estate professional, and what is it? Right? A lot of times I ask people this question. And what I end up getting is, oh, I show houses, I sell houses, um, I, I market properties, um, I coordinate transactions, uh, I work with them through the end, I'm their consultant, I'm their therapist, I'm a psychologist, I hear it all. Right? What I want you guys thinking about is your role as a real estate professional is you really have to think about being a marketing person first. 
okay? A lot of us think of ourselves as a salesperson, and we are. We definitely are in sales, 100%. But the problem is we all jump into this business to get to that commission check, and we just go, go, go. And I remember sitting in real estate school thinking to myself, I'm going to come out, I'm going to be the next top producer. I know all these people that want to buy. I know how to market myself. People are going to, everyone's been telling me you should get in real estate. You'd be great. I'm going to come out and sell everything. And then a couple months in, I remember going into my manager's office and saying, I feel like I've been punched in the face a few times. This is hard. This is not easy. He said, Carl, if, if selling real estate was easy, everyone would do it. He said, what processes and programs do you have in place to make sure that you have a full pipeline and that people think of you first when they're thinking about buying or selling real estate? And I said, well, what do you mean? I'm doing open house. I'm doing this. He's like, no, no, no. Slow it down. Go back and put a process in place so that when people think about buying or selling real estate, why are they going to think of you? And it really hit me. And it was one of the first things that I started to implement in my business after that meeting. And it's something that I urge everyone to do is stop and think about how are you marketing and branding yourself in your local market area. And video is going to help you do that. I'm going to show you how in a little bit. But how are you marketing yourself in your local area? Or are you just run and gun, an accidental realtor, falling into business, sometimes off of other people's listings because you don't have your own, right? That's not a sustainable business that you're growing that way. So, so many of us jump right into sales and we don't think about the marketing side and what we're doing in the background to create that pipeline of buyers and sellers. Because what sells more, a decent product that everyone knows about or a great product that no one knows about? Right? It's a decent product that everybody hears about. Plain and simple. McDonald's. It is not a superior product to other burger joints or other restaurants, but yet it's top of mind because of their marketing blitz. They even have happy meals. What kid doesn't want a happy meal? They get a toy. Everything they do is marketing. It's all about the marketing first to drive people in. And then, I hate to say it, but I do, I do like McDonald's. We do end up going there quite a bit, especially with my three kids, right? But the, the marketing piece is really what keeps them top of mind. So when you're thinking about, you know, where should we stop someplace quick for lunch? Oh, I mean, McDonald's is always in front of you, right? They're branding everything that they do. And you think about it in real estate. I've done transactions with agents. And these agents should be selling easily 15, 20 houses a year. The transaction was phenomenal. They were on it the whole way. You could tell they fully represented their client, yet they only sell a couple houses a year. Yet I meet other agents where I, you, you almost want to go out of your way not to show their listing so your buyer doesn't buy it. You don't have to work with them because you know it's going to be a really horrible experience getting to the closing. Right? And yet those agents that are very tough to deal with or that you don't have a good experience with sell a ridiculous amount of houses. Why is that? Number one is they have listings, so they're instantly marketable. But number two is they invest in their business, they take marketing serious, and they make sure that everybody knows who they are, what they're doing, and their level of success. So they're always top of mind. So you have a superior real estate agent, right, versus somebody who maybe doesn't provide the best level of service, but their marketing is, is incredible. I hate to say this, but when it comes to marketing in real estate, perception is reality. I have a local office in my, my market area, and they advertise one thing, and when you look at the numbers, and you really look at what they're doing, you know, they talk about their aggressive marketing plan, and they sell the most, and then when you really look at the numbers in the MLS, they have the highest days on market, they have the, the highest fall-through rate of anybody in our local market area. But if somebody is just looking in the paper or, or they're out there and they're thinking about it and they see this marketing ad, who are they going to call? That's the person they're going to call, right? So also remember that all of our marketing, everything that we do, has one purpose. It's to get the real estate consumer to come to you. You want to generate an email or a phone call off of everything that you do. I see so many real estate videos that are just generic slideshows. There's no call to action. There's no phone number. There's no personality. There's nobody to look at. It's just a couple of pictures of a house with, a, with music behind it. And yes, that, that could be effective. It's better than nothing. But think about the opportunity you have to create your own commercials, to market you, to brand you. Don't make all of your video marketing about the property. Right? That's a separate entity. Think about how are you marketing and promoting yourself 
first. That is marketing and branding. Yourself first to get those opportunities. And then that's the next level of marketing is now I have the listing and I can start to tie the listing in with my name and information going out there. There's so many people to reach. So many people that we can get in front of. And we become accidental realtors with our marketing. Right? Because we try to target everyone and anyone that might be thinking about buying or selling real estate. We just want anyone, please, if you're thinking about doing anything, you call me. You want to rent, you want to buy in this price range, that price range, the town, three towns over, my town, whatever it is, I don't care, just call me. Right? So we put this marketing out without thinking about who our audience is. So when you're creating a video, and you, especially a video where you're target marketing a specific type of buyer for a listing. And what I mean by that is, is not obviously um, going against the, uh, the, the real estate ethics in how you're targeting the, the right buyer. What I'm saying is if you have a luxury property of a million plus, you, know, you want to you wanna try to, to create a video that speaks to that audience that might be interested in that million plus, the production quality, things like that. If you're looking for first time home buyers, you might have a different approach that you take, right? If you're just looking to create random information to drive people within a specific niche or town, then you might be creating a different way. So you wanna think about your audience and try to be specific about what you're creating to reach that audience. Also, when you look up real estate on YouTube, and YouTube is the most powerful video uh, website in the world, Right? More videos being shared, more videos being watched on YouTube than any place else. They're creating uh, subdivisions now off of, uh, or not subdivisions, but different uh, pieces, uh, subcategories off of YouTube that focus on different categories, different types of videos and stuff now. But YouTube is really where it's at. It's owned by Google. So of course it's going to get you search engine optimization, SEO. And it's also just going to get you in front of a lot of people that are going there and they use YouTube if they want to watch videos as a glorified search engine. Right? So not only will it get the SEO from Google, but people are going there and just picking up random things. I had a sound in my minivan door. It was clicking. It sounded like it was ready to break. I had no idea what it was, how to fix it. So I went to YouTube. I, I typed in sound in minivan door Honda Odyssey, and the video popped up. I found out it was a latch actuator. It's a $50 part. Here's how to fix it, change it. Uh, I got my tools, everything ready to go. Uh, unfortunately, it did not tell me how to take the 500-pound the door off the side of the minivan in order to do that. But when I took it to the dealer, I said, it's a latch actuator, it's a $50 part, don't tell me I need new struts or anything else. This is what needs to be fixed on there. You could find everything and anything. And people are going and they're searching for real estate. So if you search for real estate on YouTube, you have over 2.7 million results that are going to pop up. So what I do is I use a, a local town near me as an example, Cerval, which is the boyhood home of John Bon Jovi, in case you trivia uh, folks out there needed some information. Um, Cerval, New Jersey, if I search for Cerval, New Jersey real estate, which is how people will typically search, it, it comes up with 1,400 results. All right, so you'll see that what you guys want to do is, is really narrow down those results. And what I would urge you all to do is a homework assignment based off of this course is to go and take a look on YouTube and see what your competition is doing. Because when you do a local search on YouTube and what you want to do is, is really break it down to that level. Uh, so for example, if you're in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, you would search for Fort Lauderdale, Florida real estate. And then if you had subdivisions, you might even want to break it down into those subdivisions. And I don't know what's down there, so I'll just say, Coral Springs, Fort Lauderdale, real estate, Florida, something along that line. Um, really break it down to see what people are sharing because when you do the local search, what you're going to find is the good, the bad, and the ugly. Though. I tell you, it's incredible what you will see posted on there. And what you're going to find is when you do your homework assignment from this course and you look it up, you're going to see that either your competitors are cleaning your clock when it comes to video marketing. And again, this is pretty much free. You could take a high definition uh, recorder built right into your phone, go do a quick 30 to 60 second video, post it up on YouTube, that is free. Now it's not free in the sense that it does take time, and time is money in real estate, right? But you're talking about a 30 to 60 second video. 
maybe you have to do a couple of shots, what's that, five minutes? And then you have to log into YouTube and upload it. A total of 10 minutes, and you're going to get something that could get you in front of five people, 500 people, or thousands of people. And let's say it's five. I would take five minutes of my time to get in front of five people and let them know I'm in real estate and share something with them all day long. That is a great return on your investment. Because think about it, you'll do an open house for three hours, and if you get one or two people in there, you're pretty happy. Here in five minutes, you could take a video and get five to 10 people to view it easily. That's five to 10 more people that you're getting in front of than you had before. So your competitors are either cleaning your clock with video marketing, or you will see that you have a huge opportunity to get in front of them and to be the person that owns that marketing segment in your local market area. Imagine if your competitors are all just throwing up ugly videos, bad videos, slideshows, no call to action, no personality with them, and now you have a chance to do a bunch of videos and really own that segment of marketing, which is that video marketing on YouTube for your local market area. It could be very big for you and your business, so I urge you guys to go in and check out what's going on locally. Almost every video that you see on there will be getting views, right? Views are good, but are they the right views? Also, does the home have staying power? A lot of these people put slideshows up. The slideshows are great, but you know what? When the home sells, are you making sure that you take it down or get it off of there? And who's going to go look at all of these videos that you've created in your channel on YouTube that have sold? Right? So you need to find some videos, and we're going to talk about all the different types of videos you can create. You need to find some videos that are going to have staying power, that are going to continue to get views, not just while the home is listed and your marketing is driving it in, but creating content that's going to be relevant to not just home buyers and sellers right now, but for the next couple of years until you need to update or change that content based upon what might have changed with society or the real estate market in general. All right, so you want to look at those videos and see what's going on there. Now, according to YouTube, here are the ways that home shoppers are looking on YouTube for real estate information. 86% um, go in to find out more about a specific community. All right, so this is all going to tie into the examples that I give you guys in a little bit. 70% uh, want to tour the inside of a home. 54% want to obtain general information. 44% want to compare features across multiple companies, so they're looking to see which company makes sense rather than an agent level. 38% uh, want to understand specific features. Uh, this number will continue to rise uh, due to the fact that smart homes right now are really becoming the it thing. Uh, I don't know how many of you now have an Alexa in your house. Uh, I have it. I didn't think I would use it very much because I also have Siri. I got to tell you, it's become invaluable. And just the just everything that it does, it can control your lights, it can control a lot of things in there. But even just kind of being available to, to say, hey, Alexa, what's up? And oh, it's actually turning on for me right now. <laughs> it'll tell you the weather, it'll tell you the news, it'll tell you what's going on. So it helps control the home. Nest, you're seeing uh, more people using those Nest thermostats. You're seeing more people utilizing uh, garage door openers and smart locks and smart doorbells, the doorbell rings, and now it comes up on your mobile app. These types of things are going to be in the properties that we're selling. We need to be able to discuss and talk about it, right? So you could do videos on these, lots of different videos on solar panels, and maybe interview somebody on a video about why should they have solar panels on their home, right? Those types of things will have staying power. Customer testimonials. Huge opportunity for you. Again, we'll talk about this in a little bit, but customer testimonials, people want to hear from other people. Ratings and reviews are very popular right now. I don't buy much of anything without going in and reading a review first. My son needed a new baseball glove. He loved his old one, but I can't, they don't make it. Rawlings doesn't make that glove anymore. So I went on, I was on Dick's Sporting Goods, I was on Amazon. Uh, I, I tried looking it up with the manufacturer to see which glove made sense for him because of the size of his hand and what position he played, and then I wanted to read reviews on the gloves. We're talking about a $60 to $70 purchase, and I spent probably at least 15 to 20 minutes doing some research, easily 15 to 20 minutes, right? And that's just on a $50, $60 purchase. Imagine a house. 
Do you think people want to hear from other people? They don't want to hear from us anymore. Fortunately, the days are over where people want to hear us telling them how great we are. They don't care how long we've been in the business, how many homes we sold. They want to know, did you do a great job? Did you fully represent other clients? Were you there with a strong communication plan along the way up until closing? Those types of things are what's really important to society today in making a, a home buying decision on who they're going to work with. 25% um, want to decide which company to purchase from, so they're doing research on companies, and then 24 just want to watch instructional videos. So, what I find when I look at a lot of these videos on YouTube is that only about 10% make any attempt whatsoever to build a relationship or to provide any call to action. They are not on screen or they're rambling on for way too long. I have to tell you, the optimized amount of time for a video, depending on what you're doing, if it's a quick communication video, you do not want to be over 30 seconds. If it's an instructional video, you really don't want to be over a minute to a minute and a half at the most. The reason for that, I don't know about you, but when I watch a video, if I click on it and I see it like two and a half, five minutes long, ten minutes long, I'm off of it immediately. Also, if I click on and there's no immediate impact, meaning they do not get to the point and give me some good information to kind of hook me into the video, I'm gone. The human attention span right now is seven seconds long. Seven seconds. You have seven seconds in a video to capture someone's attention before they're dozing off or they're clicking off of the video. What's funny, and I like to use this example, is that a goldfish has an eight-second attention span. So we, we've actually lost a little bit of ground there in the evolutionary chain. Um, but seven seconds. So when you're doing a video, every seven seconds you have to have a strong call to action or give them a nugget or some information or something that's going to keep them hooked. And you could easily do an informative video or a quick piece in under 30 seconds. And just an example, open houses. I take the video, I turn it on me in selfie mode. Hi, everyone. This is Carl from Nutter Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. love to invite you to my beautiful open house this Sunday, 1 to 4, 123 Main Street. I hope you can stop by. I'll be there again up until 4 o'clock. If you know anyone else looking to buy or sell real estate, please feel free to invite them. I'm looking forward to meeting you. Boom. That's it, 30 seconds or less, I did a video, call to action, it's out there. People are going to stay on it if they know that it's quick. All right, I get on these sometimes, there's no point, it's a slideshow, whatever it is, I click off of it. So just something to think about as you're building these. Also, how can you differentiate yourself through video? Show your personality, be you, have some fun with it. If you like to have fun, have fun. If you don't like to have fun and you're straightforward, that's fine too, but be yourself. Authenticity is huge with this. Again, perception becomes reality, and you want to make sure that if you put videos out there and people watch them and then they call you to work with you, that you're the same person in real life that you are on video. And this is where I've seen people really have success with video, is that they don't try to be something else. Now, I'm sure a lot of you don't like the way that you look on video. Whenever I do this live, I ask everyone, who here doesn't like the way they look on video? And I get usually about 70% of the hands go up. Here's the thing, is you look the same as if they were walking to your office or coming to your open house. It's you. It's you, and I'm sure you look great, and you're going to be phenomenal on there. I can't tell you how many people that get nervous about being on camera, and they end up being naturals, or they, they just, they're themselves, and people buy into it, right? So you can't let that fear of being on camera get in your way of potentially selling a few more houses or having more clients to work with. You just can't. You, you, you want to get over it and push through it. All right? And then think about what your value statement is as well. Have a mini value statement, you know, or a mini call line or just something that you're showcasing through the video so they're buying into you and they get what you're about. This is your opportunity to sell yourself. The where is the beef commercial, that's their value statement built right into where is the beef. Right? The reason they say where's the beef is because they want you to know that they have a superior hamburger that's bigger than everybody else's that's not going to be hidden by the bun. They don't need to explain that. Right? So it might be something that's as simple as utilizing a tagline in all of your videos, or it might just be you know, something as simple as saying, remember, I will always be there for you. Some sort of quick value statement, a quick, real quick elevator pitch that you can sell them on. 
that is incorporated in as many of your videos as possible. So here are all the simple video techniques that you guys can use, all for free. All of these are for free. You could do instant responses, market updates, slideshows, walkthroughs, testimonials, multiple offer situations, introduce local partners, local businesses, personal messages, birthdays, seller marketing, renovations, show pictures of before and after and slideshows with commentary, uh, neighborhood information. You could do a quick tip of the day or you could even do thank yous. All right, now I actually can break these down all right, and go through these and show you how you would use them. So for personal communication, instant responses, all right, this is where somebody calls you and you can't answer the phone. And quite honestly, in this day and age, if you want to sell more real estate, uh, 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 one of the best tips I can give you is answer your phone. I know that's a little off topic from video, but guys, we put our information out everywhere. And when you're doing video, you're going to be marketing yourself and you're going to be providing your phone number. When you get a phone call and you don't know the number, that doesn't mean swipe right and put it into video or put it into, uh, into voicemail. That means that your marketing is probably working and this could be a potential buyer or seller. So if you have the chance, answer the phone. But if you can't, right, if you can't, and we get a lot of people reaching out to us to ask questions. If you can't answer the phone, right, you don't want to lose them. So what you do is you record a video that day or you have a couple of videos that are already pre-recorded that say, hi, this is Carlton Utter, Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. Sorry I was not able to answer your call today. I'm actually out working with buyers and I'm going to be showing properties until the afternoon, but I will be, recall, I will be returning all phone calls by 5 p.m this afternoon. So again, thank you for the call and you'll be hearing from me soon. That's 30 seconds or less in a video format that's now saved in my camera roll. So when I get a phone call from, from a number that I don't know, chances are that call is going to be from a cell phone. I don't know if anyone uses their home lines anymore. My, my home phone went off the other day. I thought it was the fire alarm. I was like, kids, get out, fire alarm. I don't know what that noise is. Let's get out of here. Nobody uses their home phone. They're calling from their cell phone. So they're not going to leave you a message. They're just not. And they're probably not going to text you either. That only happens with my wife. If she calls, I don't answer. I get the text message, where are you? Why aren't you answering? And then i got to get back. Everybody wants that instant response these days. But most of these people, they have options. They have other people they might be wanting to call if you don't answer. You're getting one shot. right? So if they call, they can't answer. You have their phone number now saved in missed calls on your phone. What you do is you go to the missed call, you return it with a text message, and the text message, within that text message, you include your video. So imagine you reaching out to somebody, they don't answer, you're thinking about who you call next, and then you get a video back from that person saying, I will call you back by 5 o'clock today, they're going to wait for that phone call. I, I definitely would, right? Walkthroughs. You get a new listing or you're, you're previewing a property or you're showing a listing that you know is perfect for one of your buyers. Do a quick walkthrough. Hey, guys, I just want you to know I'm currently at 123 Main Street. I think this home would be perfect for you. I'm going to do a quick walkthrough the main level, right? It's got four bedrooms, two and a half baths. Here's the price range. Here's the main level. Quick video for you to look at. If you want to take a look at it, let me know. I'm actually free tomorrow afternoon if you want to see it. And now you did this quick walk through of, the, of the, the main level of the house. If you want to see the bedrooms, backyard, the rest of it, let me know. You have a call to action. And now you can communicate with that video. Send it out to anybody in your database that you think that home would be perfect for. Multiple offers. This, is, this kind of replaces that letter that we used to send in the multiple offer situation of why the buyers love the home and try to play on the emotion of the seller. Instead of the letter, put your buyers on camera. Right? Ask them, what is it about this home that you love? How, why can you see yourself living here? And let them talk about why they want to live in that home. And then when you present your offer, you have the video to supply with that offer to kind of tug on the emotions and showcase the next level of how serious your buyers are because I doubt anybody else in that multiple offer situation is going to do that. Personal messages like wishing them a happy birthday, a happy anniversary of living in the home. Um, anything. Hey guys, just want to check in with you. I know that you, you mentioned you were going to wait a little bit before buying. Just want to remind you that I'm here. I'm able to help you. Just let me know if you have any questions or you want to go out and see anything. 
quick personal messages. You're sending it in video rather than leaving the message. You know that they're not going to answer their phone. You know that they're not going to get back to you on email all the time. So this is just another way to try to kickstart and generate that lead to want to communicate back with you. And then thank yous is one of my favorite videos to do. Thank yous have become a lost art in real estate. Right? And I remember that when I was a, an agent, I had somebody in my local market area, every time I showed one of her properties, uh, I would always get a thank you from her for, for showing that property, a nice thank you card. And that really is what triggered this thought for me, is we are constantly in coming, coming in contact with potential buyers and sellers. And we let time go on. You know, it's kind of like, it, it's like playing the dating game, right? You don't want to be too eager. You don't want to call right away. So what is it, like a day and a half? Before you follow up with them, you know, what's the right time frame? I say the best thing to do is send them some sort of communication instantly, but do it through video. So it's not as eager, but you're staying in front of them and they're also seeing how tech savvy you are. So you do an open house, you have three people come through your open house. Before you pack up for the day, do a customized message to each one of those folks that came through your open house just to say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, whatever. I just want to say thank you so much for stopping by my open house today. It really was a pleasure getting to know you and meeting you. If you have any additional questions on this property or if this one doesn't meet your needs and you'd like to know more about others on the market, just know that I'm here and I would really like the opportunity to work with you. Boom. Send that right out to them and then that sets up your next follow-up call or email. How about you go on a listing appointment? And typically when we go on a listing appointment, guess what? you're competing against other realtors. So you have to figure out, how do I differentiate myself in this situation? So you go on the listing appointment, beautiful home, I, they, they give you the whole, I gotta think about it, or I have other realtors coming, whatever it might be. After you leave, go back and do a quick thank you video. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, thank you so much for inviting me into your home. I know you have a big decision to make um, regarding your largest financial uh, piece that you own right now. I just want you to know that I really feel that I'm the right person for this. Uh, I, I had a pleasure meeting you guys today, and I think that I could sell your home fastest amount of time for the most amount of money. I'd really like this opportunity to work with you. If you have any additional questions or anything else I can help you with, please let me know. And I'm just rattling that off. You, you might want to create a different type of message. Maybe you have one you want to write out and have ready to go in that situation. But do you guys see what I'm saying here? Is, is no one else is going to send that video out to the seller. So if you're competing against three other realtors, right, none of them sell, send that video, it's keeping you top of mind. They're gonna remember that video, right? So those are some, some different ways that you could use video for communication. Now, for your marketing, for YouTube, for social media, for your website, your blog, right, you could do market updates. Hi everyone, this is Carl Nutter with your, with your 30 second local market update for East Brunswick, New Jersey. I gotta tell you, right now, if you are a buyer, you have a lot of power. We're seeing the average days on market go up, and it is the perfect time for you to come in and think about what makes sense for you. And remember, a home is worth what a buyer is willing to pay. So think about what type of home you'd like to have, which one is in your price range. Let's come in, create a competitive uh, offer on this property, and see if we can get it for you. It could be something basic like that, or it could be, Hey everyone, I gotta tell you, if you're thinking about selling your home right now, it's the perfect opportunity, especially if you live in this neighborhood. We are seeing uh, right now two months of inventory and it is drastically dropping. We're seeing home prices go up and we're seeing a lot of multiple offers. So if you're thinking of selling, this might be the right time. You could do these quick market updates. Maybe it's on interest rates going up or down. Maybe it's on changes in different mortgage programs, whatever it might be. Think about what makes sense for your local market. Again, you could do walkthroughs and introductions to properties. Uh, testimonials, you're sitting with a, a buyer or seller at a closing table. This is when they're typically gonna be happiest. They are either getting the property or they're getting money, right? So that if something good is going on either way typically. So ask them, hey guys, did you enjoy working with me because I really had a great time working with you. Would you mind doing me a huge favor? In, in, in 60 seconds or less, would you mind sharing on video what you enjoyed about working with me? Now you have that testimonial, put it on YouTube, put it on your blog, put it on your website. Embed it in your digital listing presentation. There's so many things that you could use that for. Introduce local partners. These are the folks that you work with. 
daily on real estate transactions. If you're in an attorney-driven state, right, use your, you can go in and you can introduce local attorneys that can help people. If you have a home inspector, a mortgage rep, um, a home appraiser, right, all these, maybe you have contractors that can do handiwork for clients. You know, all these local partners that you have relationships with that can help people through, through the course of a real estate transaction, introduce them in a quick video. Hi everyone, I'm here with Tom. Tom owns uh, a local home inspection company in East Brunswick, New Jersey. Tom, why don't you tell them why it's important to have a home inspection before you close on the house? And then let Tom do 30 seconds. So if you guys have more questions about why it's important to have a home inspector or about real estate in this area, feel free to give me a call. You could have a whole, uh, a whole group of these videos introducing all the folks that are tied into a real estate transaction. Local businesses, when you move to an area, some of the first things you're trying to do is, who's going to cut my hair? Where am I going to get my pizza? Where do I get my Chinese food? Where's the car wash? Where's my dry cleaners? You know, where are the salons? Where's the liquor store? That one's an important one, right? Um, so go in and introduce all these local businesses. Hi, everyone. I'm here out in front of Giuseppe's. If you're moving to East Brunswick, this is my favorite pizza place, right? And I know it's important to you when you move into town. You've got to find out where your pizza place is. This is the one that I would recommend. Here I have Mr. Giuseppe himself. Why should they come to your restaurant? Let him do a pitch? Great. So here you go, folks. Here's the information in the link below this video. Let me know if you have any questions or if you need help moving to town. I'm here for you. Quick video. Introduce all these local businesses. Um, you could do a quick tip of the day, which is, hey, everyone, if you're thinking about great ways to, uh, or, hey, um, right now, do you know what the trendiest color is? The neutral color for properties and homes is no longer tan. It is now gray. You know, so if you're thinking about painting your home to a more neutral color, you might want to consider gray. I'm just throwing ideas off the top of my head, so I'm sorry if they're not flowing uh, as well as they should. I'm just trying to think of different things that you can use, but you want to get creative with these. Um, again, personal messages. I, before I announced how you can invite people to an open house, you know, do open house invitations and put it on social media, put it on your website. Um, wish people a happy birthday. So it's coming from you, you're staying in front of them. One of the things I love about Facebook is it's my online sphere of influence. And I get a reminder once a year to stay in, once a year to stay in front of all of those people. So I could go in, I could write happy birthday, enjoy another trip around the sun, have an awesome day. I could use text, with, which sometimes I do if I don't have the time or I can completely differentiate myself from all of those text messages going in, and I could do a video wishing the person happy birthday. And then hopefully they'll click on my profile if they don't remember who I am or if it's been a while to see what I'm up to, and right there it tells them I'm in real estate. So it's just some subliminal marketing. Seller marketing, and, and a lot of you can actually add some of these videos as attachments to your, to your MLS. Seller marketing is where you ask the seller, would you mind sharing one thing that you really loved about living in this home or that you're going to miss? Now, if they say nothing, great. Press hard. There's four copies. Let's get this home on the market. Um, but typically, there's going to be something that they absolutely love about the home. For me, I, I like my home, but I love my yard. Like, if we leave this house, I'm gonna, uh, all my memories are going to be in the front yard playing baseball and sports and wiffle ball, and football, and soccer with my kids out in our front yard. You know, everybody has that one thing. You know, try to get that out of the seller so it's not you telling everyone how great the home is. They're hearing it from the seller. Uh, renovations could be a slideshow where you do before and after. Neighborhood information is extremely important because people are making decisions right now based upon lifestyle, right? So when they're moving into an area, they're researching heavily that area. They want to know, is there going to be a good baseball team for my kids? Is there a gym I can join, a YMCA? Um, what about Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts for my kids? What kind of restaurants are available? What kind of parks are there? Um, they could be looking at walking distance to schools. The schools are important. They're doing research on schools. Um, maybe they're looking at commuting distance or public transportation. If I live here, how long of a walk is it to the bus or to the train from this area? Right? They're, they're making these decisions based on their lifestyle first, brick and mortar second. So neighborhood information is simple. You're going out, and hi everyone, this is Carl Snutter. I'm out in front of the East Brunswick Little League field. 
if you're thinking about registering, they have spring and fall leagues, and you could register for those typically about two months ahead of time below this video. I'm going to post a link that will take you directly into their website if you'd like to get more information or to register. Or maybe say, hi, everyone. Today I'm out in front of the Frost School. Um, there's eight elementary schools in East Brunswick, New Jersey. I'm in front of Frost, which if you go to greatschools.com has a ratings of nine. It's one of the top-ranked schools in our area. And if you're thinking about moving to East Brunswick and you're curious as to what streets and what neighborhoods would go to Frost School, please let me know. Uh, I would recommend that you do these videos if you do them for school outside of school hours. Uh, they, don't, they don't like you being out in front taking videos while the kids are there. So just a little tidbit there. But you could go to any of these places. Hi, everyone. I'm out in front of the YMCA. You know, if you're looking for a gym or, an air, or a membership, is something that you, that's important to you, just those type of videos. And then slideshows are, are still somewhat relevant. However, I would prefer you, you stay away from getting in the habit of, oh, I did a video and it's always a slideshow. Uh, there's a lot of easy ways to create slideshows, but I want you guys out in front of them so they're buying into you. All right, so we don't have time to do this. I would normally have you all at this time pick one of those types of videos and do it and submit it to me and we would watch it as a group. But for the sake of time, because we only have an hour today, what I would urge you all to do is to, after this webinar, take 15 minutes or so and create a video and start sharing it. Whether you create a marketing video, whether you invite people to your open house, whether you um, talk about the market, do a market update, whether you do your instant response video where you tell people, I'm sorry I couldn't answer the phone, but I'll be returning all calls by 5 o'clock. Whatever it might be, the, the, the best way to learn in real estate is to do it. Right? You can sit in real estate school all day long. All that teaches you is all those hours teaches you how not to get sued. It never taught us how to sell. Selling real estate was just like playing Angry Birds. Anyone here play Angry Birds? There's no directions to Angry Birds. You learn by playing the game. Right? Real estate's the same way. You learn by making mistakes and having wins, and you grow your business. You just try not to make the mistakes that are going to get you thrown in real estate jail. So I could be a talking head on this webinar and tell you about all these, and you could say that's great and wait a few weeks, and then it's going to get diluted. You're not going to remember what to post, what to do, how to do it. So what I'm going to urge you guys to do is, while the iron's hot, is go on and force yourself to go in and figure out how do I create a video on my phone, how do I send it to somebody through text messaging, and how do I take that video and upload it to social media, Facebook, or a YouTube channel? Now, I have a couple of other things that I want to talk about that are, that are loosely related to video but tie in heavily to how people like to be marketed to right now and also how they like to be communicated with. Live video is becoming very important. So, you know, I talked a lot about creating video that is recorded, but everything now is moving to live video. Facebook has put a huge and heavy influence on live video. Uh, Instagram is converting over to showcasing more live video, and a lot of that started with Snapchat. Right now, I think there's a big conspiracy with Snapchat. My 13-year-old refuses to show me how to use it. I think they have a plan to make sure that everybody over that millennial age has no idea how to use Snapchat because they don't want us going on there to market to them uh, and show them, you know, pictures of our kids and what we had for dinner and stuff. They just want to use it for what it is. And it's quick, instant photos, video, everything happens in real time and it disappears. It's not put it on there and come across and find it. So with that being said, millennial marketing is in no way traditional marketing. What has happened is everyday communication has turned into marketing for millennials. And what I mean by that is you're marketing yourself by just communicating more through these systems, not by posting things that are going to draw them in, but just purely by engaging and communicating with them, you are actually marketing yourself. Uh, we have an owner who is under 30 years old, and she is our youngest owner in our entire network of Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate, Danielle Riley. She's in Rochester, New York, and she does a tremendous amount of business from, Snap, from Snapchat because she's connected with so many people and just constantly communicating through it back and forth and engaging with people. And I look at it, I'm saying to myself, how do I use this as a, as, a, as a tool to market? And it's not used in the way that we all think. It's a total different entity. And this is where Facebook is moving to, and that's why you see commercials on live video as well as Instagram.
So to do live streaming, what you would do is you would use your app, your Facebook app, and you could either click on live or you can click and do a post and click on live video. And what it does is it instantly goes live, it tells everybody that you're going live, and they get notified that you are now live, and they can watch your video, and they can comment, and they can like it, and you could just have a lot of fun with it. So where could you use this in real estate? You could do live walkthroughs. You could tell your whole network, hey, everyone, log into my Facebook page at 1 o'clock on Sunday. I'm going to do a live walkthrough, and you guys can post questions in the chat box about the property, and I'm going to answer it. So it becomes like a virtual open house. There's a lot of cool ways that you can use it. And it records it, and it keeps it on Facebook for you. So people can still go back and watch it as a recording if they'd like. Now, Instagram, 90 million active users, 40 million photos at the end of the day, 8,500 photos are liked per second, 1,000 comments per second, right? They have apps called Layout and Boomerang, which are, are video and collage-based. Um, and now you also have Instagram Stories, which is live videos or real-time photos that people can click through that tell a story. So they, they follow in succession as you click through it. So again, you're seeing Instagram and Facebook now take on traits of Snapchat that are leading into more live communication and real-time communication. And just to show you guys the power of Instagram, and I know this isn't a video, this is a photo, but here's a picture of our baseball field in the fall. And we get just gorgeous sunsets in New Jersey in the fall. Uh, October and November, it, it, the sky lights up. It's a beautiful red-orange. Every night, it's gorgeous. Right? So this is the normal picture that I could post on social media to get some engagement. But if I put it into Instagram and add a few filters, I get that. Right? Now, that was a pretty nice picture until I saw this. And I was like, yes, that is going to get me some more engagement. So if you're wondering why you should be on Instagram, number one, the demographics. First time home buyers right now, 33% of our entire market in the United States, right? 25 to 35 year olds. The primary social media tool that they're using right now is Instagram. So if it's important for you and your audience is to get in front of first time home buyers, think about the videos that you can create. Now on Instagram, you can do live videos or you can do up to 60 seconds in a recorded video that you post in the stream. Right? So if you're trying to get in front of those folks and the, the first time home buyers are important and visual marketing is important to you, video marketing, Instagram is a good place to be. Also, this just kind of goes to show how you can use Instagram just as a photo editing tool. So this is my property. I actually cited it since then, so this is an older picture. Um, but on the left-hand side, this is just a normal photo on my iPhone. When I put it into Instagram and played around with the filters, you can see I lighten the whole property up. You don't get the shadows. Right? You can see the grass a little bit greener. It just makes it more marketable. And then I can use that photo in all my marketing. So I just wanted to review Instagram with you guys. Uh, the, the recorded videos, 60 seconds max. You could do market updates, preview of a room. You could do seller marketing, a personal message to congratulate someone on closing on a house or to thank them. Uh, you could do open house invitations. A lot of those quick 30 to second videos can easily go on Instagram. Uh, and like I mentioned before, you have the Snapchat and Instagram stories. Now, Snapchat, right, all visual, all visual. You could do some texting back and forth, but it's really about taking a photo and then being able to add different pieces to it. So you have graphical pieces that pop up depending on where you are. So if I'm in East Brunswick, New Jersey, I have a couple of these geographic tags that I can add to it that naturally pop up. A lot of restaurants and places have them as well. Or you can add text to the photo to tell the story. So here are my boys after a baseball workout, and that's just one way that I used it. Uh, also, here you can see a geographic tag that I, I put on it when I was out in California at an event. And then you can also see how you can just write on the pictures as well. And they have a lot of videos and filters and things that you can do to just be creative and have fun with it. Again, I kind of struggle with how this is real estate marketing. What it is is it's a communication tool that will keep you in front of people that might be thinking about buying or selling. That's really what it comes down to. So the filters are always fun. Um, and for those of you that go on Snapchat, you know what I'm talking about is is I was at the airport and you see people making the faces and doing the different things because they're trying to activate the filters and you can use the filters on video to have a good time and 
it really is a, a different type of marketing and communicating tool because it's so relaxed. This is not someplace you would go to, to shove, look at my new listing, look at my new listing, come to my open house, that type of stuff would, what would not work on Snapchat. It's more of just about engaging, having fun, and sharing your personality. So some video supporting apps, and I want to try to finish up quick here so I have time for questions. Uh, Capture is an app that will allow you to upload a video directly into YouTube and do some editing with it. Uh, YouTube itself has its own app, iMovie, for any Apple products, uh, the iPhones, the iPads. Uh, iMovie is free, and it allows you to really kind of cut and paste your video together and do some simple editing. You can give it a theme. You can put pictures overlaying some of the video. Uh, you can add text over top of the video. So in, in a couple of minutes, you can really do a very nice and well-produced video that you're using for your marketing. Uh, Vimeo is another website, very similar to YouTube, that lets you upload videos. If you're looking to have better privacy settings, uh, quite honestly, in, in our field, you want everyone to be able to see your videos and find them, and that's what YouTube's going to do. But if you have any videos that you want to keep more on the private side and you control who you share it with and how it's found, I would recommend Vimeo. Uh, Flipagram allows you to do slideshows that you can take as many photos as you want from your camera roll, put it right into a slideshow, decide how long you want it to be, and then add music to it, and then upload it to social media from there. Uh, InstaVid will let you go in and you can create a collage and within the collage you can have uh, regular photos and then you can also add videos built in to the collage as well. So I, I like to, to use InstaVid to do the marketing piece where it's me in the middle and I put photos of the property around me and I'm able to say, hey everyone, if you look up in this corner, you're going to see it's got a nice family room, from the family room we move into the kitchen which is in the middle photo above me and from there what I'll show you is the office. So if you're looking for an office in a property that has nice French doors, beautifully finished office that's available for you to use as an office, a den or an extra bedroom if you'd like. You, you could do that type of story or you could just have a walkthrough with some stagnant photos as well. Uh, Hyperlapse allows you to speed up your video if it's really long and you want to shorten it down you could do that. And then Pick Play Post is another app that lets you uh, insert video in with pictures and have some call to actions. And that almost acts as its own separate social media piece as well, where you can go in and see others, or you can take yours, create it, edit it there, and then upload it. Uh, Lumiere is a really cool app. And what Lumiere does is it takes a, a stagnant photo and allows you to put some simple animation over it. So you should be able to see, all I did here is I just added a little butterfly, right? And they have a bunch of standard ones that are free. The butterfly is a free one. And imagine taking a picture of a house and you just have a little butterfly. All it does is it grabs somebody's attention. It, it's something a little bit different than what everybody else is doing. And it just adds a nice little touch. So it could be snowing. You could have a butterfly. You could have all sorts of these little graphics that just animate over top of your picture that you use for your marketing. Right, 360 cameras, I recommend the Ricoh Space Theta S. They're around $350 and these 360 cameras help you with doing some video marketing, but also for your photos that you're doing. They take all around the room, up and down, so you could put it in any of your room, take the photo right on your smartphone, it translates and hooks up directly to that, and then you could paste those together, do some videos with the 360 piece. Um, or also just add those in the social media on your website and people can navigate around with them. So I'm sure you're seeing more of those. This is the camera that I would recommend that works well with that. So your next steps, you can share your videos on social media, um, create your YouTube or Vimeo channel, use keywords to tag it. So if you're uploading video into YouTube or Vimeo, use keywords so people can find it, very similar to hashtags. Um, ask people for comments. Um, you could do direct direct texting and emailing with your video. You could do mass marketing within your CRM or again your website and blogs. So I will finish up before we have a little bit of time for questions which, with, with my favorite quote which is try not, do or do not, there is no try. And I could do it in my Yoda voice if you guys like, mm, try not, do or do not, there is no try. Um, which I love this quote because you might be watching this today and saying okay this is something I'm going to try. 
when you tell yourself you're going to try something, you're, you're giving yourself the out and saying it's okay if I fail or give up on this. So what I'm suggesting to you guys is if you like this and you think it'll have an impact on your business, then just go for it. Jump in with both feet and say, I'm going to do this and put together a marketing plan that surrounds video marketing communication and figure out when you're going to make sure you have time to do all this stuff and then make it work for you. Give it time. I remember when I started farming a neighborhood. It took seven or eight months before I got my first call. How many people are going to give up on sending $200 worth of postcards out for six months? I didn't give up. I stayed with it because I know long term it was going to have an impact on my business. After a year, I was getting five to six phone calls a month with listing opportunities within 700 houses in my market area. Right? You got to you got to keep working at things and give it time. Video marketing communication is no different. So what I'm going to do at this time is we have a couple of minutes left. Olivia, do we have any questions? At this time, no. So if you do have some, feel free to send them over. Yeah, it doesn't. So if you guys like have any there. questions at all, feel free to pop them in there. I know their heads might be spinning a little bit. I threw a lot at them. <laughs> right. Yes. See, thank you. Great information. Uh, hang on one second. Ah, somebody asked if it's possible to get a hard copy of this. Um, we are recording the session, um, and we plan to post the recording online shortly after. So just feel free to contact us, um, education at wcr.org, to ask for that location. And yeah, that looks like that's it. All right. Well, I will let everyone go do their homework assignments now, which remember is look up what's being done in your local market area. Uh, to see if you can really own that marketing segment or if your competitors are doing a great job and now you have to try to catch up with them. Uh, and then try doing it. You know, all you got to do is, well, I shouldn't say try, right? That contradicts what I just told you. But, you know, jump in. Start making some of these videos and get more comfortable. And there's, there's days where you're not going to, you're not going to feel good in front of the camera. No one's, no one's forcing you to do it. If you have a day where you're getting tongue tied or it's not working out well, just turn it off, go have a cup of coffee, do something else, maybe you come back to it, maybe you do it tomorrow. Right? I have a lot of days where it's just it's not working. I, I just can't get out what I want. And uh, it's hard for me to, to, to read off of some sort of a cue card. I want it to be natural when I do it on video. So I just turn it off, I go do something else, and if I feel better later, I, I go back to it. So thanks for having me on, Olivia. This was a lot of fun. Awesome. Topic, Thanks I for love, being available. I love on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hopefully pleasure. we'll have you back soon. Sounds good. If you guys have any questions, my contact info is, is up on the screen. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me. All right. Thanks again, Carlton. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Take care, everyone.